Hi, my name is Sif Baksh, and today I'm going to cover Simplify Network Automation in AWS with Ansible and Infoblox. Magic time with extensible attributes. We're going to show you how to create the following without ever needing to know a network address, a VPC, a subnet, and EC2 instance. There's many more features, but I decided just to cover the top three, the majority of our customers ask for. Here is an example of what the network will look like. The VPC will be 10.10.16.0.20. The subnet is going to be 10.10.16.0.24. And off of that we're going to create an EC2 instance 10.10.16.7 all while talk, getting all the information from Infoblox Grid Manager. But of course, you can do many more things with AWS, such as Elastic Network Interface, Application Load Balancer, and Internet Gateway, which all require IP address and DNS names. Here's the demo. So as you can see, I don't have a VPC, so therefore I don't have a subnet. What you're going to notice is I'm going to run through a series of play, two playbooks, actually. And it will actually cover showing you reading data in from here to create a VPC and the subnet. And this is actually going to leverage two playbooks in Ansible. One here to get the next available container based off an extensible attribute that's in the data file. Run through, get the next available network in that container, create the VPC, and then create the network in NIOS. Then after that's completed, I'm sorry, the network container in IOS, then after that's completed, we're going to create the subnet doing the same thing. It's going to get the next available network, create it based off of the CIDR that's in here, so it'll create a slash 24, append these values to the comments, and then create the subnet inside uh, AWS. So let's get started with creating the VPC. So here I'm just going to run this through, and it's going to go through, look up in IOS, gather some information on the next available container out of the slash 16, the next available slash 20, create that. And let's go over there and take a look. And now if we go back to here, refresh, and there you have it. The module name, the VPC ID, and the information here. So. Here is the Infoblox NIOS. As you can see, I didn't refresh the screen yet, but if I do now, you'll see a slash 20. A couple of things in the playbook that's actually really useful. I gave a site of module dev, and then I create a VPC ID where I store the actual ID that is in AWS in an extensible attribute. The reason for this is instead of making a call to AWS, I'm just going to actually call Infobox NIOS and reference this VPC ID and use that to create my subnet. So let's go ahead and create the subnet. So now we're going to go ahead and run the playbook to create our subnet inside the VPC. So we're going to go ahead and run the playbook and it's going to go ahead and get the next available network in the slash 20 and then go ahead and create the subnet in AWS. So it's created a slash 24 and it's also reserving the first three address which something AWS does automatically. So let's go ahead and take a look at subnets and there's the name, there's the VPC ID and there's the slash 24. So as you can see all the information there um, next available, the available IP space. So now let's hop over to IPAM, click on the container, and there's our network. And inside our network, we actually have the first three addresses um, reserved. And that DNS name is already there. So therefore it added it to the 1010.16.4 uh, address. So now 1, 2, 3, and 4 is in reserve. So now we're going to hop over, look at our data file, 
and review it. So as you can see, everything that's get created, and there's the reserve information in our data file. So now that we have our subnet, let's go ahead and take a look at creating our EC2 instance. So let's go over there and look. And as you can see, there's no EC2 instance. So let's flip back over to our Ansible playbook. We're going to use this here to go ahead and create our EC2 instance. And here's the playbook. So let's go ahead and run that. So now it's going to go through, gather the IP, go ahead and use this IP now to launch the instance in AWS. I have it set to wait, as you can see here. So it's waiting for it to be spun up. So once it's in the UI, I'm going to flip over there and show you. A couple of things it's doing. It's creating the instance, giving it a name based off of the data here, the FQDN. And it's also going to use that same FQDN to create the name inside um, Infobox as well for a DNS name. So let's take a look at the results. So let's go ahead and flip over to EC2 instance, refresh, and there's our instance running. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Infobox, and you can see dot .4 is already in use. Dot .5 is the address that it's going to give us. So there it is. Let's do a quick recap. So I showed you how to use Ansible Playbook to create a VPC, create a subnet within that VPC, and then create an instance within that VPC, all using extensible attributes within Infoblox. In a link below, you will find uh, all the playbooks on GitHub. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sif Back, signing off.